Hi everyone. So here in Ohio, we have quite the cloudy weather going on. Perfect day to be inside and just doing some things here in the kitchen. I have a few things I'll be doing in this video. First of all, I'm finishing up my Christmas decorations here in the kitchen. I thought I'd show you guys what I'm doing. Nothing too major, basically just using my same old decorations. And the other part of this video will consist of some food ideas. As you can see, I'm wearing a brand new apron and I'm gonna keep this one for myself. I love it. I've been wearing it around the kitchen today. Um, it's a little bigger we start up making our aprons a little larger and i'm just loving the fabric it feels so good and it's just a handy place to wipe my hands and it's definitely fitting for the season and we do still have some leftover of these so check them out if you're at all needing a maybe a gift idea for someone or just an apron for yourself uh, cindy the lady that makes these for me she does an amazing job with them so enough talk let's get into the video i'll probably show you some of the decorating that i've been doing first and then we'll get into the food These white houses are a go-to decoration for me every Christmas season. I don't grow tired of them. Um, I've mentioned them before, but I basically just got them in thrift stores for a couple of dollars. And those that weren't white, I spray painted white. It's such an easy, inexpensive decoration and it looks great anywhere if you ask me. I'm planning on adding some trees and lights and then I have some batting that I plan to add for my snow. I probably should have added the lights before anything else, but here I am trying to weave them into my scene. After I had the scene sitting here for a day, I of course started changing some things like I normally do. I ended up removing all of the green trees. I'd rather just have the scene be white so it looks, you know, more snowy. I even began eyeing the snow or the batting and I thought, I think it would look better if I just use my fake snow. I know it's really messy, but I just kind of like that color better and the look. And even as I started changing things, I had another mind change within a mind change, if that's possible. I decided to remove the white trees and then just go with green trees and I decided I'll just sprinkle some snow over the green ones. That way everything kind of has the same snowy look. I promise I'll get it figured out eventually here. Already I can tell I'm going to like this so much better. Um, it's just more of a realistic look maybe and all glittery. I um, ended up going with just all white dishes and then adding my digital download that I showed you in a previous video. It's Loop 2. Um, I thought it looks really pretty on here and it also covers up my cord running along the back wall. And I have this little Christmas tree that I'm going to add on the side here. I um, have an old stool that someone actually gave me. Um, it's broken but I think it's going to work. The next area I'll be working on is this little cabinet by our kitchen table. And you probably remember seeing these blue onion dishes in here for a number of years. I absolutely love them. In fact, most of these pieces were gifted to me by you guys. I um, always appreciate that. But I did end up finding some green dishes or green and white in a thrift store recently. And I have that video coming soon. Um, I'll be doing sharing my whole thrift store haul. But in one of the thrift stores, I found these pretty vintage ivy dishes and they were for such a good price. I just couldn't turn them down. I thought they would look so pretty in this cabinet during the Christmas season and maybe into spring. I'm not saying I wouldn't have my blue dishes in here eventually again sometime, but for now, just for a change, I'm going to add these green ones, see how it looks. So in this corner, you're going to see I'm all about trees. I just love little trees. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use those white ones that I removed from the open shelves, put those in here, and maybe add a few round ornaments. The 
for the top here I'm also just using trees um, sticking them into these tea sugar and milk containers Once again, I'm removing a plant here. Already I can't wait to get them out next spring again, but for now they're gonna be residing in my plant space. You may remember seeing this little rosemary plant in a previous video. I'm just determined to get it to survive a year or more. I'm gonna have it by the window here sitting on this wooden riser. Crossing my fingers, it will like its environment here. Let's make some food. I get a lot of questions when I use my king cutter. Um, it is a really handy tool to have in the kitchen. The only complaint I have, which this is kind of my fault, but my countertops are wooden and my base part doesn't always want to stick to them. Now I know, you know, years ago we always had one at home and had Formica countertops and that usually worked pretty good, but I've noticed it helps to kind of dampen the bottom. It seems to stick better uh, that way, but I'm sure I'll probably have to readjust as I work with it. Broccoli salad is something that is often seen during this time of the year at family get-togethers. Again, not that it's not you know, fitting for year-round, but um, I haven't made some in a while, so today I'm going to be making some for us. And I'll share my recipe down below in the description box in case you want to try it. For some reason, I'm more prone to fixing these dishes around this time of the year. Um, it's just funny how you know certain seasons kind of spark certain ideas when it comes to food. As I'm making this dressing, I already see it's probably not going to be enough for my stuff that I cut up here, so I'll probably end up making some more. We don't want the salad to be dry. I'm planning on making a whole chicken for our supper tonight and I probably won't share this recipe but I'll just leave the link down below in the description box of the recipe book that I'm using. I've talked about it before, um, Hope's Table. Uh, one of my favorite books, um, I just love all of her recipes. My cousin Susie gave me this chicken. She actually raised her own chickens this summer and lots of memories always come back when I roast a chicken like this. At a young age, I really took interest in brace yourselves, butchering chickens of all things. And mom used to do it and I was always just fascinated watching her and she actually kind of taught me how to do it. And when I was older, even after we were married, we would raise some of our own chicken and I would butcher them. I never wanted any part in actually killing them. But after that was finished, I really enjoyed it. And sometimes I still get the urge to do it. So maybe one of these summers I'll end up raising my own chickens again. Um, it's just such a good feeling of knowing what was fed to the chicken. This is a totally healthy, you know, hormone-free, uh, fed with the best feed that is out there, you know, organic. Um, just, yeah, a good feeling to make something like this for the family. And of course, with preparing food in the kitchen, you always have all these dishes to wash. Fun, fun.
I'm doing something for Valentine's Day already with soap. I'll show you guys what I have here. You guys will probably see more of this eventually in a video, but this is what it looks like. I wanna make these cookies that we always have sometime during the Christmas season. And they have a few different names. Some people call them Mexican wedding balls and others Russian tea balls. I'm not sure where those names come from, but really simple. Just a few ingredients, you know, mix it together. You chill your dough and then you form balls and bake them. And then after they're cooled off just a bit, you roll them in powdered sugar. And then one more time after they're completely cooled. They are really delicious. I gotta say it's probably not everybody's taste, but um, it's one of our favorites. They are definitely not, you know, a healthy cookie, but to me they always seem more so. I don't know, is it because they're the texture is more, you know, dry and kind of light? It's not like your average heavier cookie would be. My friend Linda gifted me with this homemade vanilla that she made herself, and I tell you guys, I would never go back to store-bought vanilla. This is so good. I think I'll have to learn from her how to make my own or just buy it from her. It's amazing the difference. I am kind of disappointed. These are a little bit too dark. Uh, they shouldn't even have any color. Should have put them out sooner. The next dish I'm gonna fix is something you will probably see around here in every Thanksgiving meal or Christmas. Um, it is stuffing or dressing is what we call it. And this is not your stuffing that you get in restaurants or out of the box. I mean, this is the real thing. I admit I don't really make it often for us, but every now and then I will. And tonight I think it'll go really well with the chicken in the oven. My mom makes the best dressing of anyone that I know. And I have a recipe, but I always feel like it doesn't turn out quite like hers. The first thing you do is just cut up some bread, about a three-fourth loaf. And then you toast it in a pan with butter. And as it's toasting, you mix your other ingredients together. Let's see who's out on the railing. He always makes me nervous when he does that. He's definitely seeing something back in the woods. Now just from hearing mom talk about how to make dressing, I know it's good to not stir it around too much when you fry it. Um, just let it kind of brown on one side and then carefully flip it over. 
uh, not just, again, you know, mixing everything together and making it all mushy. You want to fry it relatively slow using a low to medium heat. And then, of course, you want your vegetables to soften up a bit. So we'll take a look at the food first that I prepared and then I'll give you a tour of the kitchen. Unfortunately, things were eaten a little too soon and I didn't get pictures of the Mexican wedding balls, but they were delicious, gotta say, and I'll have the recipe down below in the description box. I'm always thinking of a way to display Christmas cards that people give you, and here I'm gonna come up with an idea using twigs and jute cord. This will, trust me, be nothing fancy, and I'm not even sure is it gonna look right, you know, with cars displayed on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this shape. What I did is just go out in the woods and get some various twigs. What I'm doing is spacing these pieces, starting with a short one, uh, going longer every time, you know, creating a tree shape, and then I'm gonna connect them together using jute cord. Not quite sure, maybe I'll end up putting jute cord kind of over the twigs, almost as a garland of sorts, uh, for a place to actually hang my cards then. I know I want my tree height to be around 66 inches, so I'll measure a space on the floor and kind of go by that, you know, spacing my twigs to like 66 inches. What I'll do is hang this up and make some adjustments if something isn't even. I have the star that has lights on it. I'm going to try this for the top. Here I am a few days later moving the jute cord so that my tree is a little more pointed at the top. When I took the final video footage of the kitchen, I didn't have the cards hanging up at the time. So if you notice that the tree is still bare in the upcoming video, that's why I just hung them up later. So I tried not to overdo it here in the kitchen with you know decorating for Christmas. I kind of like just a little touches here and there. And if you're still needing some last minute Christmas decorations, this Loop 2 is available as a digital download on the Etsy shop. After I had taken the videos of the kitchen, I remembered I forgot to display my little nativity scene. Um, this is a concrete, I think, is a material. I had gotten it years ago at country gatherings. They no longer have it, unfortunately. So cute. And in case you missed the video where I made this little vintage sled, make sure to check that out. I had stuck it in between my regular Wednesday videos. I'll link it down below in the description box. It was such a fun project to do. I baked these little breads for our guests at the cottages. And here I just took a batch out of the oven. Gotta say it smells really good in here. I wish I could get the smell to you. Speaking of scents in a room, let's not forget we still have some Christmas candles. In fact, just today I went out to the shop and I thought I'm gonna pick out a candle to burn here in the kitchen. And I went along, smelled every Christmas one, and I could not decide. I like them all so much, but of course, knowing me, I kind of gravitate toward Christmas hearth. So I ended up bringing one of those in. 
Um, I actually have the 13 ounce amber jar Christmas hearth here. Um, it smells heavenly. I've talked about this before, how this smell is, it has a blend of maybe citrus. I'm not sure what all is in here, but it actually has almost like a smoky smell to it, but in a good way. Um, it just reminds you of winter. Like if I smell this, I just sense a cozy fireplace and a hearth and um, just, yeah, some fruit maybe. And I can't even really explain it, but it's so perfect for the holiday season. I'll definitely be burning this throughout the winter, just being that it's such a fitting scent. And then I also wanted something a little foodie. So I went with gingerbread and I still have my little wax melter that I'm using. I have talked about this before, found it in Dollar Tree of all places. I'm gonna put a gingerbread melt in here and then also burn my Christmas hearth at the same time. I always like to try to blend flavors. It's amazing how well they actually smell together. I have one more thing I quickly want to show you before ending the video. My cousin Susie made some last minute holiday mint soap. And as I'm talking here, I'm smelling it beside me. I wish I could get that to you, but it smells so good. She did a really good job of swirling it. It looks so Christmassy. I do want to mention, I'm not sure that we'll get it to you in time for Christmas though. We'll do our best. In fact, we'll probably get them shipped out this week. So some of you might get it in time. It's such a fresh wintry scent even. And in case you're local here, we do have some of the soap stocked at Addie's if you want to check that out. So enough of that. Thanks again for watching. I hope your day is going great and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.